Hey everybody, Keylime here with another class guide. This time we're going to go with a Frost Mage class. Frost Mage is kind of like the Titan's best friend. They play pretty similar, however, there are some slight differences. Um, Frost Mage is a very freeze heavy type class, as you can imagine, whereas Titan is more of like a defensive type class. So, Titan, you're getting barriers on Browns, whereas on Frost Mage, you're giving yourself an opportunity to magic pump yourself as well as freeze the enemy every time someone on your side casts a spell. So Frost Mage is definitely a very strong PvP type class or a Guild Wars type class. Frost Mage is especially good on defense um, because in Guild Wars type scenarios, the other team not being able to loop is extremely complicated for them since they have to be running a lineup that's all the same color, or at least they should be. So if you do have defenses in um, Guild Wars, I strongly recommend if you were running Titan before, probably switch those to Frost Mage. Unless for whatever reason your hero was in the first slot specifically, then maybe not, but for the most part, as long as your hero is not in that first slot, Frost Mage is almost certainly going to be better than running a Titan in that same kind of lineup. But let us talk about, actually before I even get into it, let me give you a quick little demo on what Freeze actually is. I suspect a lot of people don't actually know how Freeze works exactly. So what Freeze is all about is uh, the ability to remove extra turns from the other team. So in this instance, this person is frozen, which means any red gems that are 4-5 matched, any yellow gems that are 4-5 matched, or any blue gems that are 4-5 matched are not going to create extra turns. So it doesn't matter that this person is running blue um, and they're not frozen. As long as anybody that's blue is frozen, everybody is now essentially frozen for 4-5 matches on blues. So when you freeze somebody, uh, especially it's nice when you get a mythic like this where there's three different manas that are now essentially frozen. Uh, you're going to prevent a lot of looping that's going on with this team. Like Basically, none of these three troops at this point, just because they share blue mana, are going to be able to do anything fun to me as far as extra turns. Unless their ability, of course, does it. Um, the other cool thing about Freeze is if this top troop is the one that's frozen, if they do skull damage with a 4 or 5 match, the extra turn is not going to happen as a result of that as well. So if the other team is doing a 4 or 5 match on skulls when this person is frozen, they're not going to get an extra turn. However, if they were getting a 4-5 match of skulls that also happened to carry with it a 4-5 match of gems, that would loop as long as nobody frozen is with that mana color that was matched, if that makes any sense. So, again, when somebody is frozen, all of those mana colors are essentially locked from an extra turn perspective for gems. If this person's frozen, then it's not going to matter if they do skulls with 4-5s as well on top of the mana. Um, that's going to be blocked as well. So freeze is a very, very strong thing because in today in Gems of War, looping is kind of everything. So if you have a Frost Mage class where it's very centered around trying to get everybody on their side frozen, it's going to stop them from being able to do that looping and force them to basically, if they're not running a cleanse of some kind or a bless of some kind, they're going to have a pretty hard time dealing with whatever you're doing. And all you have to do is keep looping yourself and you'll naturally be freezing these other people. I felt like it was important to kind of cover that because I don't, I've seen people that have been playing for a long time not actually understand how Freeze works, so it's definitely worth covering. But let's talk about the Frost Mage class and what makes them so fun. So this first trait here, nothing great, whatever. Next one and the next one, you can kind of see this theme starting to build. So ally casts a spell, ally casts a spell. So you want to be casting spells as often as you can with the Frost Mage class to get the most benefit. In this trait's instance, you're getting one magic every time someone casts a spell on your team. So you can obviously tell how looping all of your teammates between each other is going to create a lot of magic pumping for your hero. And then in this instance, there's a 25% chance that you're going to freeze a random enemy whenever you cast a spell. So every single time you cast a spell, there's a chance you're going to freeze and you're going to be magic pumping yourself just with your base traits. So naturally you can tell how you know looping lineups is kind of really, really, really what the Frost Mage is after. Every kind of class obviously wants to be looping, but Frost Mage is kind of naturally getting benefits up from it beyond just like how well the team is doing by themselves. When it comes to traits, or talents I should say, um, there's actually great ones all the way up to level 70 at pretty much every row here. So at level 1 you're getting a Snap Freeze, which is just freezing someone at the start. You pretty much definitely want to be taking that certainly over this one, which is just a one-time stat pump. I always say that these are no good. And then this one is a storm on four or fives. I can see an argument to be made for this one sometimes, but for me, since Frost Mage is kind of your PvP slash Guild Wars specialist class, you almost certainly want to be freezing right at the start of the fight. You kind of set yourself up to have that natural defense against just getting looped to death on turn one. Uh, I'm sure you've probably fought a team that was like Yao and Queen Titania and Taipan. If you had frozen either Queen Titania or Yao, 
that team isn't able to do its crazy loop to death thing, you're just going to naturally have that defense. So Snap Freeze to me is pretty much always a level 1 get. Um, really, really strong. At level 5, you can be immune to Frozen yourself, which seems thematically relevant. So that's obviously a very good one, kind of regardless. Uh, this 2 magic, again, is a one-time stat pump, and it's very circumstantial. Only if you're in the last position, uh, I generally don't recommend any of these. And then 2 magic on maces, again, one-time stat pump, usually not that good. Being immune to Frozen is going to be useful pretty much across the board, so I definitely recommend this more than any of the others. At level 10, this 3 magic to pull arm again, one-time stat pump, not that great. Uh, however, being reduced damage from spells by 20% is very, very nice, so this is going to give you a little more survivability from a spell perspective. This also fits nicely with where I mentioned that you don't really want to be running your Frost Mage in the first slot. If you're not in the first slot, the only way you're going to be taking damage is from spells, and you're naturally resistant to spells, so keeping your Frost Mage out of that top slot is kind of increasing your survivability, A, because you're not taking skull damage, and B, because the spell damage you are taking is reduced a little bit. 20% is like not insane, but it's certainly better than nothing. So this is actually a really nice talent to pick up. Uh, Thunderfist again is a one-time stat bump. It's for all allies, but it doesn't really make it any better. So at level 10, this is the one you want. You want that spell damage reduction. At level 20, uh, again, this one-time stat bump for blue allies, nothing all that special. However, having mana start with 50% uh, is really sick. So if you ever have mana source as an option, it's going to be extremely hard to take anything else. This really makes the class like sing, it makes it fast, you really really want to do this, it gets you casting spells sooner, so mana source is always extremely strong, if it's offered to you, you almost certainly want to be taking it. Storm Aura, this could be useful in some instances, so if you were running more of a Mountain Crusher kind of lineup to try and get Dust Storms, um, this could be more useful as a start. It'd be really really hard to convince me that a 50% mana start wouldn't be better anyway, but I could see someone making an argument for something like this. Having a Dust Storm at the start could potentially be useful to get your lineup starting way, way faster. Um, but for the most part, uh, like 99% of the time, I would say Mana Source is the go-to. Um, I've clicked this on Mana Source, and I've never really given myself a reason to even try this one. At level 40, this ability to submerge on every 4 or 5 is really nice, so it gives your team some natural defenses against... Uh, AoE type damage, so people like World Breaker or like tens of thousands of other troops that are just dealing damage to all. Uh, anyone that submerged is not going to be taking that damage. Since Frost Mage is a very loop heavy lineup, of course, you're going to be submerging pretty frequently. So this is also a very nice thing to pick up at level 40. Uh, again, this one time stat pump, not very great. And again, this one time stat pump, not very great. So it's kind of easy to pick this one. At level 70, it kind of makes me cry. Um, there's really good talents. Uh, every single one of these. So bonus blue mana is very, very nice. So if you have a very blue heavy kind of lineup, this can accelerate how quickly everyone in your lineup gets their mana, uh, which naturally leads to casting more spells. Same deal with this one, getting bonus purple mana. That's also very, very nice. So these are both extremely great talents to be able to take. However, they are up against, like to me, the best at level 70 here, which is exploding a yellow on four or five. So if you're running a loop heavy lineup as you should be with Frost Mage, uh, hopefully you understand that this is going to increase your loop potential over what it would normally be. Just think of the fact if you converted all the gems on a board without this talent, you would basically just leave all the gems exactly in place and not be able to take advantage of like if there was only one 4-5 match when you converted everything, now you've got a board with a bunch of random gems. Um, whereas if you have this, it's going to jumble up the board for you and create opportunities to have more 4 or 5 matches. So I've seen people try and argue with me that this is not a useful talent and they don't like how it messes up 4 or 5 matches for them. Like you see another one on another part of the board and then this ruins it. I basically promise you that for every one time that happens, you'll probably get 5 extra 4 or 5 matches um, that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So... Lightning Strike to me is kind of like a top tier talent, regardless of where it sits, you pretty much have to take it. At level 100, there's nothing all that interesting. Um, you know, this 2 magic when people die, not that fun. Uh, 2 magic in life when an enemy dies, again, not that fun. This one kind of fits thematically with um, Frost Mage again with this casting. So all elementals gain 1 magic when the ally casts a spell, this is pretty okay. Um, so, as far as any of these go, I would always take this one, even if I was running a lineup of, like, anything else, basically. This will give you the most opportunity to get some value out of the Frost Mage. So, 
extremely loop heavy lineup you get a lot of benefits you get that 50 percent mana start you get some protection from spells you get a freeze right away you're protected from freeze yourself so this will help your team get that looping going without having it interrupted and you'll get some natural defenses from four um, aoe type spells so overall the frost mage class is set up to do some really good stuff so when it comes to what kind of troops you want to put in a frost mage kind of lineup to me, the best thing you really want to be looking at are these people. So you set your thing to convert gems for the spell effect and base rarity. And these are all the people that convert gems right away. So anyone in here is who you'd probably want to start with building your lineup around because all of these people are going to create loop potential in one way or another. And again, with Frost Major, always trying to loop. So having troops like this are people that are going to really, really, really help you get some looping going on. Um, and also more importantly are these people so same same sort here but with the empowered trait being filtered on these people that are can casting right away so they start with full mana so with frost mage you already are doing that snap freeze right away which is going to freeze somebody and then since we have that 25 percent to freeze every spell cast this is somebody who can cast a spell right away and they also always give you some kind of mana except in the instances of the ones that do skulls but you're going to be getting mana as a result of these things. So it's going to start your lineup much faster than it would otherwise. Since you're casting a spell, your hero is going to get a magic pump, and it's also going to have a 25% chance to freeze somebody. So every Frost Mage lineup that you're running should have at least one of these in it, from my perspective. Um, extremely, extremely strong. Um, but then looking back at the troops that you'd want to be running here, uh, some really, really strong ones to look at would be like Divine Ishbala. So... If you have other divines in your lineup, they'll all start with 40% mana. She'll start with 40% mana herself. She's also converting reds to skulls and then greens to yellows. Um, what's notable about that is that turning greens to yellows is great because she is yellow herself. So she has the potential to just keep herself looping over and over again. So Divine Ishbala, from a mana start perspective, as well as being able to fill herself, uh, is really, really strong. And then just for fun, she enchants two people. So really strong troop in general, um, but from a Frost Mage point of view, also extremely strong. Somebody that pairs with her pretty nicely is actually Wrath. So he does a very similar thing to Ishbala where he's transforming blues to browns, and you'll see that he's brown himself. Um, something else that's cool with him is that every time you do skulls, you're exploding two random gems. So I already mentioned that you should be taking Lightning Strike talent, which is going to blow up a yellow on four or five matches. If those four or five matches happen to be skulls, you're going to be blowing up three gems. Uh, so he, him turning yellows to skulls is super synergistic with Divine Ishbala because he's filling himself by converting stuff to browns. Um, she's creating a lot of yellow gems just by her cast as well. So if Wrath is full and you cast this, now most of the board is yellow, and then now you can just turn all those yellows to skulls. So... You can kind of see how those two loops like play into each other, which is exactly what you want in a Frost Mage lineup. Other really, really strong uh, converters here would be someone like Glaceon. So extremely resistant to skull damage himself. Um, he boosts his own attack as you go. He also converts yellows to blues and red to doom skulls, which is much stronger than just regular skulls. Obviously, every single one of those gets you an extra five damage on top of it. You'll likely be converting a lot more than just one. It'll probably be something like 7 to 10 that you'll be blowing up, which is going to be an extra, like, what, 35 to 50 damage on top of whatever skull damage you did. Uh, so Doom Skull transformations are always extremely strong, and hey, look at that, he freezes. So he kind of fits nicely in a Frost Mage lineup as well. Kind of fits everywhere. He's my best bud. Uh, building around him is extremely nice. Other converters that you've got in there would be people like Quillen. So Bless, of, as I've talked about in other videos, is an extremely strong buff. He blesses two random allies. He also converts purples to reds and browns to skulls. So you can see how Wrath and him might play together since Wrath is creating a lot of browns. Um, he's turning all those browns into skulls, so putting the two of them in a lineup together is also pretty cool. Uh, he's also giving all allies one magic on four or five. So with Quillen in your lineup with the Frost Mage, you can start seeing how like stat pumping becomes a thing where now your hero is getting two magic uh, constantly. Like either he's getting one from a four or five match, or he's just getting one because someone casts a spell. Uh, your hero is going to get pumped up pretty quick when you're running someone like Quillen. Uh, beyond all of that, like pretty much anyone that converts, like obviously Yao is extremely strong, so pairing them up with Frost Mage is always going to be fun. 
Um, these are the types of troops that you really, really want to have in your lineup. The only other types of folks you'd want to run in your lineup might be somebody that explodes the board, someone like an Infernus, like a Gorgotha. Uh, those types of people, if there's a storm running, will create a really strong opportunity to get other four or five matches. So that's really, again, what you want to be doing. Looping somehow. Explosions with storms, or conversions, or mana creation, uh, that, that's the name of the game. So let me give you a little sense of what that looks like in practice here. So this team looks kind of scary, um, but let's run a Frost Mage lineup here, and I'll talk through this a little bit. So as I've talked about before, uh, these Empowered Converters are really nice, and you'll see that in this lineup I'm running two of them specifically. Um, unfortunately when I'm looking at the board, oh actually I see a Gimlet one there, but let's just for argument's sake say I didn't see a Gimlet 4 match here, and I didn't see a Mercy 4 match here. Looking at this troop that they have, he's converting all blues to yellows. He has that for sure. So one of the things that you need to be doing when you PvP or just play this game in general is always pay attention to what conversions the enemy cares about. Since I'm fighting this team, I'm guessing that's a Doom weapon, yeah. So since I'm playing this team, knowing what these troops can actually do is extremely useful to do. When I see a Moon Rabbit that's full, I know I need to worry about yellows and blues being together. When I see that Yao is full, I know I need to worry about reds and purples being together. That's what he's trying to match. Uh, Ubiset doesn't do anything like that. I just need to make sure I don't get my ass kicked. And then with him, I just don't want to see reds and skulls put together. So since I do have a four match, I don't have to worry about this. But again, if I didn't, you really need to be aware of this. And if I didn't have a four or five match, the best move I could do here would be removing their four or five match. So I'd probably pull this blue this way. That would only give them three matches instead of a five match here, or a six match even. So, uh, I do have it though, so let's just cast it. Sorry, that was an extremely long way to say all that. Um, so now I'm in that exact situation that I just talked about. I don't have any four or five matches myself, but I can see that they still do. Uh, if I pull this down, that's a bad time, so I'm going to do exactly what I said before. And now he doesn't even get to cast it. Uh, I'm still trying to either get my rope dart. Uh, this will actually get me a four match. Uh, let's rope dart somebody. Uh, I don't like you. And since I'm freezing, I'm not as worried about Yao, although he'll still hurt a lot. Uh, no four fives with Mercy, but let's get this red. Um, now I get to mm, get this one. Killed somebody, so that's cool. Uh, Mercy now has one, so let's get rid of that. And you can see how I, just before I cast that, I had two people submerged. Um, Glaceon freezes people, but there's two people frozen here, so I've been freezing people as the game's been going on. My people have been getting submerged. Uh, things are going quite well for me. So I'm going to rope dart somebody else. Don't like you. Uh, I cannot do a good Glaceon cast in here, but since I use rope dart, we can just kill this guy. I don't mind that that's happening. Um, Gimlet looks perfect. And I could just rope dart again here, and I probably will. Uh, rope dart is up to 35 right now. Um, Glaceon still no fun. Bum, bum, bum. I'm just gonna kill that moon rabbit. Still nothing fun. If Mercy was there, that would be fun. Uh, let's just do that. So now he's ready to go, and as I mentioned before, he's looking for skulls and red gems and I'm also looking for skulls and red gems so technically if I cast this I remove any of his damage potential but I also know that if I cast this the odds of me doing anything beyond this match is pretty low they'd be pretty Hail Mary style he's already frozen so I don't need to worry about that too much there's nothing touching from that perspective so all I'm gonna do is more of this defensive move which means he's not gonna get any of the matches that he's really looking for uh, and then I get to do my damage so I'm going to pull this one Glaceon is set up naturally to take skull damage back in return. We'll take this four match. We're gonna hit him with the rope dart. I magically create this guy. That's fun. Um, Gimlet is good to go. And now Glaceon is not. But this person is. He's entangled. I really don't have to be thinking this hard, honestly, at this point in time. I'm just very used to playing cleanly, so I'm trying to just uh, get my win as nicely as I possibly can. Uh, there's a Mercy match there. 
and it's over. So this lineup that I just showed you requires like a very conscious awareness of what kind of gems are on the board, what conversions are available for you, but you could tell for the most part I'm just looping into myself the entire time. I was freezing the entire time, I was entangling people with the rope dart, um, my magic was pumping on the rope dart. Um, that was actually a slower game than I would normally see for that kind of a lineup, but if you're running a Frost Mage class and you are running those converters, just be very, very smart about how you play them. I hope kind of watching me play that gave you some sense of what you need to be thinking about uh, when you're playing a Frost Mage or just playing the game in general. So let's run this version of the lineup. Again, this is a very loop-heavy, skull-based kind of lineup. Um, I only have one empowered converter in this lineup. Well, it was me, but you know, fortunately for me, this entire column basically lines up, so we'll just cast this. This person was frozen right at the start of the game, uh, but now all three of my people are uh, free to go. So I already know that I've got three spells that I can potentially cast. Um, usually you want to be starting out with a rope dart. Uh, for whatever reason, they're running this kind of a lineup without a uh, stealthy, so that's not cool for them. Uh, I'm looking for browns, and they're there, so we'll go with this. And now we'll just convert this. And it's just looping forever. Um, I could theoretically cast, I think, literally anybody in my lineup. I got Quill in there. Uh, yeah, I could literally cast anybody in my lineup right now, and it would loop. So the other team's in a really, really bad spot. And that's basically what this lineup specifically is used for. I'm sure you've come up against this kind of lineup. But you can just see how busted this is already, right? So I've got, like, two people blessed here because of Quillen. I've got three people submerged. I have full mana. Uh, they've been getting frozen as they go. This is from a Frost Mage lineup. You can run this lineup with any class, but I would argue that it's best with Frost Mage. This thing's already doing 40 damage on top of it. Um, they haven't even done anything. Their Greed hasn't even casted yet. I'm not, I don't remember, but I don't think the other team's even taken a turn yet. Um, and knowing that I could cast anything right now it kind of makes this busted. Um, so let's just pull this greed up to the top. Let's see if we can just straight up, like, flawless victory this guy. Um, take this. I know that this will create a 4-5 match. Uh, I can do browns here. And it's over. So they literally didn't even get a turn. And they were frozen even if they did. So that's an example of really what makes the Frost Mage class great. You know, the Rope Dart weapon doesn't do 40 damage by default, and if this game went on for a long time, uh, that Rope Dart can start to be doing 50 damage or 55 damage or something else like that. So when it comes to PvP and Guild Wars, um, Frost Mage is extremely strong. It's a class that plays very nicely. If you like the Titan class and you haven't tried Frost Mage yet, I strongly recommend leveling it up. It has some perks that the Titan class doesn't have. Again, Titan is more your defensive version of what a Frost Mage is bringing. Um, almost always in PvP and Guild Wars, the Frost Mage is going to be better than the Titan. The only time that isn't true is when your hero is in the first slot. Then I would argue that Titan is probably your better choice. So overall, Frost Mage, I would argue, great class. Uh, I would consider it in the top three classes overall, if not certainly in the top five. Uh, so if you're not sure which class to go with, you might have your Titan at 100 already. Hopefully I've convinced you to get your Sun Spear up to 100 already. Frost Mage is definitely worth a look. Uh, I think your PvP win rate and your Guild Wars win rate will uh, thank you very much. So this is Keylime signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!